Hello, today's video is part of the investigation series. The name of the video is Harvesting Humans, Blood in Their Hands. Today is June 8, 2021. I need to do a little bit of a warning. This is going to be a very disturbing topic, so if you're very sensitive, please do not watch. The agenda for today is background, transplant tourism, the A market, Blood Services Canada, and key questions. First, I'm going to talk a little bit of a background from a planetary perspective. It is my belief that humans have been harvested for a very, very long time. In previous videos, I have spoken about some intangible ways of how our energy is being used. I did a video called Emotions Are Energy in June of last year, and I also did an explanation of what is happening from the energetic perspective on the meditation video from October 25th from last year. Now today I will be addressing tangible ways of how our bodies are also being used. I'm going to talk about transplant tourism. I am going to talk about the A market. I can't say that word, so please know that every time I say A market, I'm referring to that. And then we're going to talk about Canadian Blood Services. That is an institution that exists in Canada. We're going to talk about the commonalities between these three tangible activities. They all are profiting from other Spain. They need medical intervention. It is extremely unethical and it's operating against life. So let's start with transplant tourism. And a basic definition talks about the fact that it's every time that a person travels to another country to buy an organ to be used for a transplant. Why would you do that? According to the government of Canada, sometimes when people are expecting to receive kidney as a transplant, they have to wait four to five years. So clearly that's um, a very lengthy period of time. So they go to different countries and they have availability and obviously it's a black market because um, people are not necessarily traveling to these places to do it in a formal manner. So 2013 was a very important year because there was a trial in Kosovo that actually provides a lot of context about the organ trafficking and the result of that trial actually was a conviction of many doctors. So very important also because it helps us to understand how big is potentially this market. And as you may imagine, anything that is illegal is very difficult to measure, but it gives us an estimate of what the profit may have been for the year 2013, that it was estimated at about $1.2 billion in profit per year. So to give you a little bit of context, I am adding here the top 10 companies in 2020 in terms of profit. And you add people and companies like Walmart, Amazon, companies, oil and gas, Chinese banks, etc. And when you add all this profit is only $200 million. So that's only 16% of what the traffic is. So you can imagine how big this is. Now let's talk about who seeks organs and according to the WHO, the top seven countries in terms of demand include Canada, US and Australia. And where do you go to find these organs? Obviously the top destinations are including China for obvious reasons, a quantity of people and also clear violation of human rights. And uh, sadly I found my native Colombia here in one of those uh, top destinations. The Kosovo trial also talk about specifics in the Chinese market and how some prisoners are being executed in extremely harsh conditions with anesthetics, etc., to cover this demand. Other well, sources obviously are people who are poor, who are desperate. Some people are being deceived, they're being kidnapped, and obviously there are many, many cases as explained in this specific Kosovo trial. And finally, a very, very sad testimony of a um, very young kid of only six years old and um, his eyes were extracted. So obviously it's a very dark subject and it's a very dark market. The most vulnerable, according to this report from 2013, is obviously children. Almost 46% uh, of all the victims are going to be focused on children. So. As a result of this, the judge said that the governments, particularly the government of Canada, needed to do something and make sure that it would be starting to make illegal for these activities to take place. But sadly, as of 2021, nothing has been implemented to prevent this crime. So now let's talk about the A market. Obviously, there are a lot of denials. Everybody says it's a conspiracy theory, even though a lot of people have seen certain videos and um, they know for sure that even the place it in front of our eyes with things like what you see down there, Lady Gaga, eggs drinking, 
blah 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 so i can't read because i am afraid my channel will be getting another strike but you get enough information here and if you want to stop the video at any time go to the sources in yellow you can always do that as well so for those of you who don't know i'm sure everybody knows at this uh, point in time this substance is produced by the oxidation of adrenaline as a result of intense fear so here is a leaked document that obviously you can stop at any time and go through the details because it's a company that operates in New York and is actually talking about specific production of this product by detention center with average age of um, detainees. And uh, they even talk about uh, suicide attempts being present in this specific location. They classify the quality and the order of the um, um, quantities um, for all the different, sorry, the, all the quantity and the quality and prices are here. And here you have the detainees by origin, age, and obviously their production rate. So you can see in the purple area, the average age. So you can imagine how really bad this thing is. Obviously, sources might include missing children. You know how many children are lost, quote, lost every year. In the U.S., 160,000, other countries are there, Canada, 45,000. So it's extremely sad that children, quote, disappear. Some insightful details can be found in a recent movie called Sound of Freedom. And um, the same actor that played Jesus in Passion of the Christ is the gentleman who did this movie. He actually went also to my native Colombia and he filmed in Cartagena. And he was um, obviously seeing a lot of videos and a lot of testimonies that made him believe that this is actually a reality, a sad reality, but it's true. Now let's talk about Canadian blood services. For those of you like me <laughs> that didn't um, know about these things, in 1946, Canadian Red Cross was um, created in Canada as a response of the Second World War. And then between the 70s and the 80s, there was a um, very um, interesting situation because the blood supply was contaminated with um, HIV and hepatitis C. And apparently there was um, the way of uh, um, actually determining at least a thousand people linked to this situation. So. In 1993, the federal provinces um, started an inquiry, ex excluding the province of Quebec, which I found very interesting. Why wouldn't Quebec want to do an inquiry about it? But that's uh, um, what it happened. And they created something called the Quebec Report because it's um, the person who was in charge of um, doing this report. His last name was Quebec. So as a result of this, in 1998, it was dismantled because obviously they couldn't allow this to, quote, happen again. And it was created a double agency, Canadian Blood Services, that re regulates all the provinces except Quebec, that is regulated by HEMA Quebec. Absolutely makes no sense to me, but that's how it is. The current situation, according to the government, is that we have one of the safest blood systems in the world, thanks to the strict standards. I don't know how true or not true is, but that's what the government says. So here we go with a perfect example of a contradiction. When you look on Wikipedia about the Canadian Blood Services, it says that it's an independent from the Canadian government. But in the same paragraph, it says that it's founded mainly through the provincial and territorial government. So how can an institution be independent if it depends on the government to be founded? So it makes absolutely no sense. One thing that it's important to understand is the blood donation process because immediately after you donate blood, it gets separated in three parts. 55% that is the most rich and most important is the plasma. And this is going to be frozen right away because it has a shelf life of a year. And we don't have in Canada the system called fract fractionation. So that is the system on which we actually break down this plasma and we can produce other products. So it needs to be exported to the U.S. There's also another portion uh, that is the white cells and the platelets and it um, typically lasts between three to five days and then the red cells that can be stored for up to 42 days. However, if the raw material is free because we know that these all are donations, how is it ethical to then produce products and sell them for profit? So if you do a quick search on the internet, you see there are a lot of products that are being produced with plasma. And actually, there is a market price of these products. And you can see here how a treatment that needs to be purchased dash, dash paid 
are between 7,000 per treatment for certain patients and over $200,000 annually. So once again, you're getting a product for free and then you sell it for a lot of money. A simple search shows the scope of this issue. Human plasma for sale was my search. You can buy human plasma, human blood products, human plasma, etc., etc. Also, you can find prices. All the links are below. In this specific uh, company, you can buy one milliliter for $41 and it's going to be shipping the same day. So, I don't know, plasma from human. Canadians are clearly interested in this business. So you can see again, very simple searches. CPR isn't the first company to pay for human plasma. And then underneath from November of 2020, UCPL MLA's private members bill aims to lift Alberta's ban on private sale of blood products. So clearly there's so much money to be made that the government is interested in this business. According to the Red Cross, the antibodies in uh, the blood are being affected by C19 and the antibodies are actually placed inside of the plasma. So according to the Red Cross, we are getting problems once you have injected this, um, the blood stream. So how are we going to be safe from getting spiked blood into our system if we, an uninjected person is going to receive a transfusion? And my question here is, do we have another scandal in our hands similar to the one from the Krever report? And the answer is very likely. Yes. Some key questions to finish. Who is ruling this planet? What is the overall objective of these planetary actions? Which organizations are protecting humans? And based on all this information, what can you personally do? Thank you very much.